Hi class, we meet again in the last part of the correlation and simple linear regression series. I would like to thank all of you for your focus, determination, positivity and persistence in learning statistics on your own. I do hope that everyone gains the knowledge that you need for your future and also do well in your exams through the video series. Okay then, let's start our discussion. So in this video, we will be making inferences about the slope or B. As all of you have already known, Based on the previous chapters, there are two ways to make inferences about a parameter. The first one is using estimation. And the second one is by testing the hypothesis. Before we make estimation of the slope, we need to discuss the concepts of sampling distribution of the estimated slope. So the sampling distribution of the estimated slope is normally distributed. And if this is normally distributed, then the mean of the estimated slope is given as B and the standard deviation of the estimated slope is given as the one here. Now because in regression we are always dealing with sample data so there is no way to find the actual value of the slope and so we estimate the slope using the value of the estimated slope or the lower case b and we estimate sigma b using sb where the value of sb is given as the one here. So to find the sample standard deviation of b or sb, we simply need to know the values of the sum of squares of xx, yy, and xy, and also the estimated slope. When doing estimation, we would always want to construct the confidence interval for the parameter. So a confidence interval for b could be calculated using this formula here. So it is simply the estimated slope plus minus you're going to use the t distribution and sb where sb is given as the formula here so do not worry about the formulas everything is provided so the degrees of freedom for the t distribution when estimating the slope is n minus 2. let's move on to the continuation of the past year final exam question so you are given the same data and you are asked to compute a 98% confidence interval for B or the population slope. So as previously discussed, the 98% confidence interval for the slope is B plus minus T alpha over 2. The degrees of freedom is N minus 2. SB. I will start by finding the t values. So for confidence interval, it is two tailed, and this would be t alpha over two, and alpha is two percent. So one part of alpha is zero point zero one. So this would be t. 0.01, comma, our n is 8, 
8 minus 2 is 6. So let's look for the t value. Degrees of freedom 6. Alpha is 0 0.01. So the t value is 3.143. This would be 3.143. And now let's calculate SB. So to calculate SB, we need to first calculate the SE. And SE is given as the square root of SSYY minus BSSXY divided by N minus 2. So SSYY is based on our previous calculation. 70.58 minus B 0 0.1. 1805 SSXY is 388 divided by N minus 2 would be 6 and the answer would be 0 0.3017 and so SB is simply SE over square root of the sum of squares of xx which is 2150. This gives us 0 0.0065. And because we already have the values of t and sb, we could already calculate the 98% confidence interval for b. So this would be 0 0.0065. 1805 plus minus the t value is 3.143 and sb is 0 0.0065 and so the 98% confidence interval for the slope is 0 0.1601, 0 0.2 Zero, zero, 009. What does it mean actually? It means that we are 98% confident that the slope of B lies somewhere in this interval. So it lies somewhere between 0 0.1601 and 0 0.2009. So that is why we always start with a smaller value on your left hand side and a larger value on your right hand side. Okay, so now we are at the second half of the video. We are going to make inference about the slope using hypothesis testing. Now, as all of you have, have already known that we have three types of hypothesis testing, a two-tail test, a right-tail test, and a left-tail test. In order to determine which test that we would be using, we have to read the question carefully. Okay, and then next, the test statistic for B is simply B minus the population slope over SB. And SB we have already calculated just now. Okay, looks quite easy. And I am pretty sure that without me even discussing the next section, you would be able to do it yourself. So why don't you try that question by yourself? Okay, let's look at the question. All right, so you could try this question out by yourself. You could press the pause button and then you could check the answer with me after this. Okay, but before that, let's discuss this part of the hypothesis testing about the slope. So it says that the value of B is substituted from the null hypothesis. Yes, this is true. And we are going to use the T distribution with N minus 2 degrees of freedom. And finally, it says that one important T test on the slope is when we are going to test that B is equals to 0. Okay, now what happens when B is equals to 0? So we have y equals to a plus bx plus the error term, right? So what happens when b is equals to 0? 
when b is equals to 0, then your dependent variable y is no more dependent on the independent variable x. Right? It means that there is no significant linear relationship between y and x. Okay, now we could start discussing the example. So, this question is based on the previous question. Okay, um, we have the same data set and you are asked to test at the 0 0.01 level of significance, so alpha is 0 0.01 where the b is equals to 0 and then next you have to do something else. So first let's solve this. We need to test whether b is equals to 0. That means the null hypothesis would be that the slope is equals to 0 and what is the alternative class? Yes, the slope is not equals to 0. So we have a two-tailed test. Let's move on. The test statistic would be B, estimated slope 0 0.1805 minus capital B, which is the slope, and B is equals to 0 here, over SB, and SB is 0 0.0065. This is based from our previous calculation. Okay, so the test statistics gives us the value of 27. 0.7692 and what's the next step? Perfect the rejection region. So we have a two-tailed test. What's alpha again? 0 0.01 that means this would be 0 0.005 and this is also 0 0.005 and so the critical value is t 0 0.005 and minus 2 would be 6 so let's check for the critical values degrees of freedom 6 alpha 0 0.005 and our critical value is 3.707. So we have 3.707. And this one here would be negative 3.707. So let's check whether it falls in the rejection or non-rejection region. Definitely falls in the rejection region. So let's make a conclusion. The star falls in the rejection region and so we reject H null. So H null is rejected. We are going to accept the alternative and how do we write the conclusion? You are asked to Test whether B is equals to 0. So B is not equal to 0. That's our conclusion. The B is not equal to 0. There you go. It's quite easy. Okay, we are going to solve the second problem. Next, using the same level of significance, that means alpha is 0 0.01. Test whether B is positive class before we solve this question you need to think about the meaning of positive what is a positive value does it start from zero or is positive greater than zero and you could google that so positive values are all values that are greater than zero. That means when we are testing for B is positive, we are going to test whether B is greater than zero. OK, 
okay positive means greater than zero and greater than zero falls at the alternative hypothesis because it doesn't contain any equal sign so this means b is positive okay and this means b is not positive B is not positive. You can't say B is negative here because when B is negative, B is less than zero. There's no equal sign. Okay? So if you're supposed to test whether B is negative, you would change this to B less than zero. So we have the same test statistic there. Okay, D star would be 27.7692. And what happens to the rejection region? Now the rejection region is only one tail and it is on your right hand side. Alpha would be 0 0.01. So you could check the t distribution, but we already have this value from our confidence interval just now. So this one is t 0 0.01,6. So the value is 3.143. Okay. Now we are going to check whether this falls in the rejection region and definitely, definitely falls in the rejection region. So we could make a conclusion. So D star falls in the rejection region. We reject H now, reject this, and so we accept this. That means B is positive. B is positive. And there you go. Okay, so when you have a strong understanding of the basic concepts of statistics from the beginning chapters, then the final chapters would be so easy. Okay, so this is one of the easiest chapters for you and I could understand why. You have done tremendously well in this course and yes we did it okay so we have managed to finish simple linear regression and correlation and class i'll see you again in the next chapter all the best for your midterm exam